Welcome to the UC San Diego Epilepsy Monitoring Unit. My name is Rochelle. We are a level four epilepsy monitoring unit. This is the highest, most comprehensive level of care. Your physician has ordered a video EEG hospitalization for you, and it's our hope that this video will help prepare you for your stay, help you feel safe and well cared for in the EMU. Video EEG is in-depth diagnostic testing Looking at the brain's electrical activity with electrodes glued to the patient's scalp, as well as observing the patient on camera. During this time, the team will try to trigger patient seizures and observe them having seizures on camera. Correlate those symptoms with the EEG in order to provide an accurate diagnosis and treatment options. Let's walk you through your admission day. You will be asked to arrive at 7.45 a.m. at Thornton Hospital, located at 9300 Campus Point Drive in La Jolla, California. Patient and visitor parking can be in either parking structure. The cost for parking is $2 an hour, with a minimum of two hours and a maximum of eight hours a day, subject to change. There are kiosks by the elevators in each parking structure. You might want to give yourself a little extra time to find parking. The Will Sally Epilepsy Monitoring Unit is located on the second floor of Thornton Hospital. We have six dedicated EMU beds. Once you arrive, you will go to the admissions office and check in for your admission. You will sign paperwork and get your armband. Once you've registered, please make your way to the main hospital elevators. Take a ride up to the second floor and find your way to the Two West Nurses Station. Once you've reached the nurses station, someone will escort you to your private room and the staff will begin the admission process. You can expect admission morning to be very busy. You will be visited by several staff members ranging from doctors to food service staff. Once you enter your room, someone will assist you in changing into the hospital gown or your personal clothing. Please note, we recommend that you wear a hospital gown because the pocket on the front is helpful with all of our monitoring equipment. But if you wish to wear your own clothing, please wear something that opens in the front or that you're not required to pull over your head to get it on and off. We also ask you wear undergarments on your lower half of your body as we instruct the nurses to pull your blankets off when you have a seizure event. This can be your choice of garment, sweatpants, gym shorts, yoga pants, jeans, pajama bottoms, and the like. You will be in a private room across from the nurse's station with 24 seven nursing care provided. There will be someone watching your video 24 hours a day for the completion of your stay. You will have a television, internet access, and a private bathroom. We encourage you to bring activities that will help you to pass time such as puzzles, reading, a laptop computer for movie watching, adult coloring books, and games. Visiting hours are open unless it's flu season and then there may be some restrictions on child visitors. We do encourage family and friends to stay with you as much as possible. If someone wants to stay the night, we do provide one sleeper chair for a visitor to stay with you. An EEG technician will connect you to the EEG machine using a strong glue called collodion, which has a very strong smell. The technician will provide you with the mask to protect you from the irritation from the smell. We ask that you come with clean, dry hair that's free from any products. The nurses will be re-gelling the electrodes every four hours during your stay. The gel does not have an odor. The camera's at the foot of the bed, high up on the wall. Your video will be recording at all times during your stay. For your safety, we have staff watching your video at all times. There is no camera in the bathroom. There is a microphone for sound so that we may assess your seizure for language, language comprehension, and memory. We respect your privacy and we do not listen in on any of your conversations. We do use the sound when the team reviews a seizure occurrence. In order to treat you urgently in the event of a prolonged seizure, you will have an IV catheter placed in your hand or arm, not connected to any fluid, for emergency medication access. This will be placed on the morning of your admission. Your safety comes first. You will be attached to two oximeters and a heart monitor box. 
These items use patches placed on your chest or clips or stickers on your fingers. This gives us extra safety measures in caring for you as there are different sets of eyes on you at all times. We realize it's difficult to be attached to so many wires, but we ask that you please wear these for your protection. You will have two call buttons within your reach at all times. One call button is to call the nurse for requests like assistance to the bathroom or getting up in a chair. This button is found on the same remote as a television. The other button is found tucked away in your EEG pack. This is the button that we want you to push if you have any seizure-like symptoms, which could be a variety of symptoms, ranging from the feelings of your stomach rising to the onset of a partial seizure noticed by a family member. I cannot overemphasize how important it is in helping the physician study your seizures. Due to the risk of falling with the seizure, we ask that you do not get out of bed or the chair without a nurse present. For added safety measures, your bed and chair will have an exit alarm device that will sound upon exiting the bed. The bed will have four padded rails that will be in the up position to prevent accidental falls out of the bed with the seizure. Patients often attempt or succeed to get out of bed during or after a seizure. To further keep you from falling out of bed or attempting to leave during or right after a seizure, we ask the patients to wear a safety belt. The safety belt is a front fastening lock and key system. We like to think of it as a seat belt to hold you in a safe place when your brain starts to activate. The patient will have access to the key at all times and may refuse to wear the belt at any given point in the hospital stay. We do ask that you inform your nurse if you decide to take it off at any time during your stay. How we provoke seizures. We use a variety of techniques to try to provoke your seizures during your stay. We may lower or stop your seizure medications in a safe environment based on individual patient seizure history. Once you arrive, we may also ask you to sleep deprive yourself, sleeping only four hours a night for at least the first couple of days. You may have caffeine drinks if you desire to help you with your wakefulness. Your doctor may also ask you to skip a meal during your stay. Lowering your blood sugar can trigger a seizure. When a seizure-like activity occurs, either the patient, the patient family, or video technician will sound the seizure alarm. The alarm will notify the nurses that a seizure is occurring and the specialized trained nursing staff will rapidly enter the room assess the patient for safety, and begin seizure testing. Many patients ask, what does seizure testing mean? Seizure testing means the nurse will ask the patient questions, such as, what is your name? What is the name of the building we are in? Remember the word purple rain. Can you count from 20 to 10 backwards? The nurses will stay with you until you are stable and answering questions appropriately. As you know, this is a teaching hospital. You can expect to see the epilepsy fellow doctor or the resident doctor every morning while on the EMU. The epilepsy fellow will be reviewing the EEGs from the previous 24 hours. Mid-morning, the attending physician and the team will meet to review the EEG together. You can expect the team to round between 10 and 12 every day. This is a good time frame for family to be present who want to hear and discuss what the team is finding in the previous 24 hours. It is during this time your doctor will tell you what the next 24 hour plan will be. We will provide you with three meals a day. You may also bring food from home. There's a patient refrigerator on the floor where you may store the food with your name on it. The nurses will get your food for you upon request. If you are on a special diet, we'll order your diet preferences on your request. For your safety, we ask that you not be on your feet without a nurse present at your side. Falls are the number one risk while undergoing this procedure. You will not be allowed to walk around or leave the room at any time. You will have a foot cycle in your room that you can use as much as you would like for exercise and movement. You will be asked to cycle for 15 minutes three times a day to avoid blood clots as well. We find the patients like having the foot cycle for an optional physical activity while in the EMU, and we observe many patients using the foot cycle in the evening to help them stay awake. The average length of stay for an EMU patient is three to five days. 
Our goal is to record two to three of each type of your seizures if you have more than one type. If we have not met our seizure goals by the end of the week, the team oftentimes encourages the patient to stay over the weekend to meet the goals of the stay. We would like to stress the key points regarding your discharge. In most cases, once we've achieved our goals of your stay, we will ask you to stay an additional day for recovery and safe discharge. Your doctor will put you back on seizure medications, allow you to sleep as much as possible, and then send you home the following day. We really feel this is important for our patient safety. You are important to us. We really hope that this video has helped to prepare you for your stay here at UC San Diego Epilepsy Monitoring Unit. We look forward to providing care for you and to help make your journey through your EMU stay the most comfortable as possible.